Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sweet onion barbecue sauce. Uh, my regular viewers may look at the counter and go, what is he doing with this? Well, there is a story about this because I really try to use all fresh ingredients as opposed to, you know, things with preservatives in them. But I'm starting to understand how conspiracy theories get started. There's a supermarket near my house, okay? And this has happened so often now, um, I've lost count, where I've got recipes planned and there's like one crucial ingredient that I need, and I get down there and they have everything except what I want, right? Interesting how the sirens come up while we're talking about this, you know, being conspiracy and all that. But, you know, and then I was thinking after, like, I wonder, like, when I leave, if, like, a black van is going to pull up and men with like sunglasses and earpieces are going to put the lemons back after I'm gone, you know. So <laughs> if you've had similar experiences, there's probably a support group online. Anyways, by all means use fresh lemon juice if you have it. I want to show you how to make this today so I'm using what I have. So here's the ingredient list. One nice thing about today's recipe, aside from being really easy and tasty, is that you can actually just throw everything in the pot for a change. Now, if you do prefer sequence, uh, what you can do is start with the brown sugar, because that way I don't have to wash the cup, uh, which I would have to do if I started with the vinegar or the lemon juice. So just get that out. When I said packed, it might pack in so tight you gotta put your finger in to get it out and measure the lemon juice vinegar I always put my cup back on my cutting board instead of the counter because acid will, will eat through granite if you let it sit too long where's the sir shake it up and of course this because it's a sauce is always to taste. Feel free to play around with the proportions of any of the ingredients, putting more or less to your taste once you've figured out how to make this. The oil. Now the reason I'm putting oil in a barbecue sauce is because if you don't have some kind of this, um, then again you may want to put a bit more. The sugars will cause your meat to stick to the barbecue. Okay, and it will always do that to some degree, it's just worse. So if you got a bit of oil in here, um, it won't stick as much. Plus, it also helps the flavor of the spices develop. Salt, pepper. Now, I do grind my own and keep it in this thing. So I have to unscrew the lid. Now I got coarse and fine grind in here. So I think I will try to pick out the fine stuff from the bottom. Oh, it's got a couple of big pieces, it doesn't really matter. And I always like a little bit of kick in my sauces, so just a quarter teaspoon of chili flakes, and again, if you like it hotter, by all means add more. Now, yeah, I try to just get the flakes without too many seeds in this. Peel and chop the garlic, cut the ends off. Give it a smack. The skins don't break cleanly. You can hold it down and just give it a brief cut to help to get that off easily. And once you've got that peeled, chop it up. And don't worry if it's a little uneven, okay? Think about it this way. If your sauce turns out just gorgeous, right? Yeah, you want some chunks in there. You want people to believe that you made it. Because they might just go, yeah, whatever. You like took this out of a bottle and put it in a jar. And if you got big chunks in it once in a while, you go, no, I made that myself. Now, once the garlic's in, up to you. I personally prefer to mix in the tomato paste right now. Oh, good. No white liner. Enough people must have complained. Because, you know, that used to get me that this was organic tomato paste. And they were still using white liners with BPA in them. But apparently not anymore. So get 
the tomato paste in there. And this you do want to have all mushed in with the spatula before you add the onion. It just makes it so much easier. So I use the spatula to rub down any large chunks of tomato paste into the sauce. Now for those of you thinking this looks pretty thick right now before it's even cooked, please remember onions have a very high water content and when they're heated it will come right out into the sauce. So hopefully after it's cooked it will just get the right balance and come back to looking like this and you can of course control the consistency you get by increasing or decreasing the cooking time. It does not look nice already, eh? And this is not even cooked yet. Pour the onion as usual. Cut off the ends. Hold it carefully. Now, you can either go full thickness on the first outside or just halfway through if you just wanted to get the skin off. If there are any blemishes or whatnot on the outside, just take off the whole first ring. Let's get your thumb underneath there and peel it off, skin and all. You want this to come out really nice as a sauce, so there's no point to try to put like bad onion in there. Chop it down the middle. Inspect the inside. Oh, I got a really good one. There's no brown bits or anything. Now, if you want to get super fancy, you can cut out the onion bum here at the bottom or the root or whatever you want to call it. And first, two really thin slices, shaving it nearly like that thin because you already have chunks for the garlic. This you want to nearly dissolve into the sauce. So just take that extra few minutes to slice it really fine. If you have a mandolin, see? I'm going to zoom on that so you can actually see what I'm talking about. The onion is that fine, okay? And you can see the knife underneath it. I've discarded the heel and I'm already starting to chop. I did one rough chop, now I'm gonna kinda turn it around and go the other way. And the truly impatient may be wondering why I just don't get a blender and huck all this in there and puree it. Well, the answer is you're gonna get onion juice with a little bit of pulp. Yes, you can do that, but the texture will not be the same. And for the small amount of time it takes to do this, I far prefer it this way. Cutting it twice, one direction, then turning it, and cutting the other direction should be enough. You can always give it a third chop quick for good luck. Oh, there's a big piece. That adds character again. And authenticity. Get your pot and put that in. Now, I neglected to mention yeah, I've got the heel of the onion here. When you're gutting that fine and it looks like you might cut yourself, you've got enough in here. Just throw that out, okay? Don't take any chances, unless you're throwing it in the blender. And since you missed the first cut on the first half, I'll just show you now. It's all thinly sliced there. And just keep your fingers out of the way. And start chopping. Push down on the onion with your fingers firmly behind the knife and just shave it in as small pieces as you can similar when you were slicing it and if any of you remember those old mob movies where they're slicing the garlic in prison yeah it's sort of like that so I threw in the rest of the onion I'll get some light on this before I start cooking it Another reason why you want to slice it so thin, yeah, you see how easy that makes in? Makes it a lot easier for the water to come out when it's sliced that thin. 
so you have much much better control over the cooking and you won't get a raw flavor. Just get it started on medium high and just stay with it stirring it a bit till it comes to a boil. It will start to boil around the edges first now if you do have a couple of burnt bits that you can catch by all means just stir them in it will add to the caramelized color but I would turn it down to medium right now if you're using gas uh, because you don't want the sides of the pan to burn and wreck the flavor and when it's starting to do that it will come to a boil pretty quick anyways so when the surface of your sauce is throwing off like those lava bubbles with bursts of steam that is the time that you turn it right down to low get your lid and put it on now set your timer for 20 minutes and come back and look at it then well here we are at 20 minutes let's have a look yep so that has thickened down and cooked considerably it's not stuck on the bottom it's got a really nice smell but I think I want to let this go for another 10 minutes yep just leaving it on, on low and I'll set my alarm for another 10 minutes so here's at a full half an hour yep. that's as good as it's going to get Take it off the heat, let it cool off. Now if you want a really chunky sauce, it is fine just as it is. Once it cools down there, you can see it's quite thick right now. Now, if you would like something that looks a little more like it's out of the bottle, that's fine too. And I'll take a minute and show you how to do that. Get yourself a bowl, doesn't have to be that big, just make sure that it sits, the strainer sits completely inside the bowl so you don't have anything dripping out. And get your spatula and scrape everything into the strainer. And you can see some of it's dripping through already. And then patiently start to press the spatula against the bottom of the strainer so that the sauce comes through. The purpose of doing it this way is that all the sauce you're going to get that come out of the bottom is going to be completely smooth and then you have the option of putting in however much texture from the top back into it as opposed to just throwing it in a blender and whirring it up and then you get an even mixture without any texture at all. Now if that's what you want by all means go ahead and do that. I prefer it like this. Now one thing I should point out is because it's so thick, every once in a while what you're going to have to do is just put the spatula on the bottom like that. See what I'm doing? Kind of peel it up to get it to drip off and go into the bowl. And that way it's going to make it a lot easier to push through the rest of it. So I've passed most of this through the sieve. Now what you can do if you want is you can kind of scrape out a bit of the onion pulp in the bottom and mix that in if you want to give it a nice little bit of texture now if you found that you put in too much or some of the chunks are a little too big what you can do is just pick out a bit I'm just using this as an example put it back in and press it through the sieve again until you get it exactly the way you want so I'm pretty much done with this here now. So I've transferred that to a clean bowl and I'll just stir it up a bit so you can get a feeling for the consistency. So that's how I make my sweet onion barbecue sauce. It's got a really smooth mellow flavor. Now of course if you want it a bit darker you could always use a darker brown sugar. Uh, I don't find smoke is actually necessary in barbecue sauces unless you happen to like that stuff. And if you do, well, just make it with some. 
Okay, so thank you for watching and I do hope to see you again. Bye-bye.